NYC at the Grand Theater in Calgary, and I'm Michelle Sklar, and I am joined by Chris Vester, who spoke to us today about um, really kind of going back to understanding our community roots and uh, collective roots when it comes to actually farming and eating. So I think maybe I summarized that, but probably left out some of the juicy stuff, which is where you come in. Um, give us uh, just some of the you know high-level insights as to what you hope you convey to the audience today. Oh boy, high-level insights. High-level. You're building expectations. That's I don't know if I can I deliver. <laughs> Um, I think one of the most important ones is that we are moral beings and we need to decide whether we are going to in fact live in a way which is moral and just or not and either we are honest about it or we are not and I think that's probably one of the most important points I was trying to make and our food is really just a symptom right of, of deeper underlying social illness I think I would probably call it and unfortunately it's not being dealt with in any serious way at this point in time and I would like people to, to do so. I really want to encourage people to think about it as a whole system, right? And not in ask, isolation. Right, so let me ask you, this is sort of more from a, um, an industry and commerce perspective. Alberta, for example, is a province that, I mean, really our farmland makes up a considerable amount of the geography that we have here, yes. right? As the prairie provinces do in general. And certainly it's that, you know, the farming community that's really certainly embraced more of the commercial opportunities, you know, big business opportunities, subsidies through government where necessary. But we're running into so many hurdles with that particular process. And it's not that it doesn't work all the way around. I'm not, yeah. you know, here to, you know, necessarily kind of bash things. But I do think that it's important to look at when a when a when a process looks like it's broken. It begs a number of other questions. Yes. And I think that in Alberta, we're kind of in a unique position to kind of embrace some of the opportunity that we do here looking at farming communities and maybe learning bigger and better and stronger and more important ways to kind of feed that back into, you know, our local communities and set it, whether we're setting an example on a global stage or we are participating in a global, you know, trade opportunity. I think that the dynamic of how farmers are doing business is changing, I guess is what I'm saying. And Absolutely. maybe you can speak to that for a moment. Yeah, I, I think it is. I think uh, a lot of farmers have come to a dead end, more or less, right? They cannot get more land and buy bigger equipment and use more high-tech farming and production methods um, because they're not able to pay it off, right? They're just, they're stuck. And there aren't any alternatives that are being laid out there by the government in a serious fashion, unfortunately. So it has to become a self-directed, self-initiated process, which is what's happened in Alberta so far. Yeah, and the, I think it's interesting too how we can look at so many industries that are recognizing that they need to embrace um, perhaps some self-regulating opportunities because they know, I mean, part of it is I think you know your industry best. Yeah. You're probably best able to determine how to grow that industry and move forward. I think that that's got to be part of that discussion as well. Yeah, but unfortunately, even even outside of agriculture, people are stuck often within an industry, and certainly in agriculture, within a narrow paradigm. And they have a very hard time imagining themselves outside of it. Right. And there may be very practical, intelligent, and in the end, successful solutions that could be adopted, which they're simply not able to imagine. And, and that's unfortunate because they're doubly impoverished, right? They're, they have a challenge making a living, a fair living on a, a, sometimes on a massive piece of land, right? These people should be rich considering the amount of land they have at their disposal. They should be millionaires right. and they're not, right. right? They're struggling to make pennies off of each and every acre. Right. And somebody needs to help spark that process. And our government isn't really stepping in where it could. They have the resources, and if you look outside of just that specific one and, and put it all together again, we have a huge health issue, right? Our budget provincially is 35% minimum spent on health care. Well, health and food are two systems that don't exist in isolation, right? If we push the price of food down and make our, cheap, our food as cheap as possible, our health care costs go up. Right, there's a historical relationship that you can extrapolate from the data which demonstrates that. You go back 50 years of our disposable income, we were spending about like 25% on food, 25 to 30% on food and our healthcare costs were very low as a percentage of our collective wealth. And now they flipped, right? We're down to 9% of our income being spent on food 
and our healthcare system is now chewing up 35% of our collective wealth. And that's just simply, it, if, you, if you don't put it all together and look at it as a holistic system, which is what all life on this planet is, you're asking for trouble, right? And, and we dealt with that tonight. I right. mean, not we, we didn't deal with it, but we addressed it to a certain degree. Right, which leads me to my next question. I mean, you know, this is this was an event that was, uh, well, the theme was uh, forward motion and community. And we wanted to bring together a group of people that could inspire and motivate, um, you know, Calgary individuals, Calgary as a collective, to think about how they can, you know, either step up, engage, and be active in their community, re-engage them or reinvigorate them in, in communities that they are active in. So what's sort of one of the areas that you would like to say, here's a community that you should consider getting involved in? Food. Dude. The sustainable food community. Slow food or just making it a part of your life. Slow food, I, I'm obviously representative of that organization, yeah. so I can speak to it. Um, has been for many years and in this how city. How can we get involved in the slow food movement? You can come out to our events. You can become a member in slow food. It, it's not just a Calgary organization, it's an international organization. So if you become a member, you are a member globally. And you're based in the Calgary organization and have access to our events and that sort of thing. And access to our our initiatives, right? And you're able to cooperate with us to move that whole agenda forward, right. which would be absolutely fantastic because we're all volunteers, none of us are paid, and we do it because we believe in what we're doing. And I think that would be a great place for people to start, but just making food, real food, a part of your life. Like grow a garden, get a community garden plot, whatever you need to do, like just make it, make yourself aware first uh, about the issues surrounding food, and then make it a really serious part of your life. Because, I mean, apart from the water and the air that we breathe, it's the one thing we need, right? Yeah. You cannot live for more than 20 days or whatever it is without food. And you can't live as a healthy being if you're not putting healthy food into your body. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. Right. It doesn't Chris, work. thank you so much for joining us. You're really welcome. appreciate that. Been here speaking with Chris Vester, and we're at TEDxYYC. I'm Michelle Sklar.